This is our progressive decade launch. This right here is the kickoff celebration. We are here today to talk about MVP's progressive decades to win all the elections and all the policies and all these states and make the 2020s the progressive decade to get the change we need at every level. Because there's been so much going on with the pandemic and with this election and so many things, we haven't even really had a chance to take a step back and reflect, we're in a new decade, right? We're in the 20s, the 2020s, which will be in the future known as the 20s, you know? And you think about decades, like the 60s were like this, the 80s were like this. What are the 2020s gonna be like? What's gonna be the legacy of this generation in this history of the planet? What are people gonna look back and say, we have the chance to make the 2020s a progressive decade, a decade that transforms American history. So basically there are two scenarios. I call them the good scenario and the bad scenario. <laughs> and the bad scenario goes like this. As we know, normally in a midterm year, the president's party typically loses 20 to 30 seats. So we wake up on Wednesday, November 9th, 2022, 2022. We wake up on Wednesday, November 9th, 2022, and we've lost the House. And we lost the Senate by one vote. And we've lost the governor of Michigan, the governor of Wisconsin, the governor of Pennsylvania, and we've lost the secretary of state in Arizona. And in January, 2023, Republicans control all levers of power, except for the presidency. They control both houses of Congress. They control all the swing state governments. They have us in a vice grip and they change all the voting laws at the state level. And then what happens? Trump says, I'm going to run again. Or maybe it's Ivanka or Ron DeSantis or Nikki Haley, and they cut into our advantages in the suburbs. And as the 2024 election approaches, we have Biden, who will be 81 years old, and we have Kamala Harris, who would be a historic candidate, in many ways a great candidate, but one who we know will be dealing with unprecedented racism and sexism and xenophobia. And let's be clear, whether we love her or not, if Kamala is our candidate, we need to be prepared to fight with everything we've got to get her elected. And we do. We fight with everything we've got. And the election comes down to a nail biter in the electoral college. But this time, Republicans control the voting process in Michigan and Wisconsin and Pennsylvania and Arizona. And we wake up on Wednesday, November 6th, 2024, and the unthinkable has happened again. We're back where we were in 2016, but this time it's even worse. Imagine what they do the second time around. And with climate change, it's game over. So that's the nightmare scenario. I know it's too awful to think about, but we have to think about it because right now we're probably looking at a 50-50 chance of living in that nightmare scenario. And I wanna let that sink in for a moment. I wanna ask you to think about what you'd be willing to do to make sure that we don't end up in that nightmare scenario. We cannot let that happen again. So everyone take a deep breath, shake it off. And let's talk about the good scenario. Ah, the good scenario, the good scenario. Still shake off the bad scenario, it's so bad. Okay, we're in the good scenario. We're in the good scenario. The good scenario starts right now, right here on this phone call. We're getting the virus under control. Yay, the numbers are going down. The economy is bouncing back. We pass a $3 trillion infrastructure bill with game-changing investments in renewable energy. And Manchin agrees to a talking filibuster and we pass the For the People Act, which if you haven't read it, what's in it, it's, it's amazing. It's 
so many good things. Like maybe we even get DC statehood. I mean, wouldn't that be amazing? And in all likelihood, we won't get everything we want at the federal level in this year. But we take some giant steps forward so that people see their lives are actually getting better. And so the voting process actually works better. And we go all out and we put everything we have into going big in the 2022 midterms. And we not only hold the House and Senate, we pick up a few seats. And we not only hold the governors and secretaries of state in Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and the secretary of state in Arizona, we win a trifecta in Arizona. Yeah, Alex. And we elect Stacey Abrams governor in Georgia. And we go into 2024 in a strong place, no matter who our candidate is, if it's Biden or Kamala Harris or someone else. The basic analysis of making the 2020s a progressive decade, I was thinking about this, is that the first part of the 2020s should be the hardest. If we can survive 2022 and 2024, y'all, over time, the demographics are gonna shift in our favor and there's a decent chance that we can maintain a democratic trifecta at the federal level for the whole decade. If we get through 2022 and 2024, we should be able not only to win a progressive decade, we might be able to win two or three progressive decades. We might be able to have a whole progressive century, okay? We can have universal health care. We can have leadership on climate change to actually save ourselves. We can create a more fair and equitable economy. We can greatly reduce poverty. We can greatly reduce mass incarceration and invest in people again. We can reverse a lot of the anti-Black, anti-Asian, anti-immigrant, anti-Latinx, anti-Muslim, anti-women, anti-queer, anti-trans social policies, not only at the federal level, but in the states, in Texas. This is, I wore this for you, Mina. Texas, Texas rising. We're gonna transform Texas. We're gonna transform Georgia, North Carolina over the next decade. They're gonna be the next Nevadas and Colorados and Virginias. And in the decade after that, the 2030s, we're gonna do the same to help support groups to transform South Carolina, Mississippi, Tennessee, Indiana, Kansas. There's no question whether there's gonna be a progressive decade there is gonna be a progressive decade. The only question is whether it's gonna happen in the 2020s or whether we're gonna have to wait until the 2030s after we spend the 2020s in a trumped up nightmare. And all that is gonna be determined in 2024, which is gonna be largely determined in 2022 which is gonna be determined in large part in 2021, right now. So take a deep breath. Think about both of these scenarios and think about what you are willing to do to make sure we get one scenario and not the other.